Hey everybody, welcome to Disaster Communications. It's the channel where we like to get information and give information. Today we're going to be doing a special unboxing of the T-Bean Supreme from Lilygo. Lilygo is sponsoring this channel by sending me one of these to check out. I do already have one of their T-Beams. It's the original version, but this is the Supreme version. So the big difference between this and the original that I can see right away is the, uh, the antenna came off the the side whereas this one came off the top uh, I do like that and I think I've got some better mounting options for it so currently the the T-beam versions I'm using now I have one that's mounted in my car the Tahoe and it, it lives there permanently hooked to an outside antenna and then the other one is hooked up here at the house and acts as a uh, server basically for the MQTT network this one I was I was eyeing because uh, I like the idea of the mounting it vertical, and uh, I may be trying to mount this on my my uh, plate carrier or my tactical communication series. So we'll see about that. But let's jump into it. Uh, first observations right away is I'm noticing the the Bluetooth antenna here. This uh, upgrade on this this particular model, they went with a Bluetooth version five, so it's a little newer Bluetooth. And uh, just looking here, got the antenna jack on the top. This one, the screen's already soldered in. I had to solder the other T beams in. A little bit different design. Does have a USB C instead of the other USB that uh, the other one did. So I like that a little better. And it looks like it has some slots here for some other things. So, anyways, that's the first thing I noticed in the kit. Here is the antenna. And I will say, it, I think that's pretty similar to the other antenna that came with it. As with all of these lower boards, you do want to put that antenna in right away before you ever power the radio up. So that's important. It uh, looks like in the box it also comes with some jumpers. And this is going to be, we probably won't ever use them for our purposes, but it looks like this goes into these side. Yeah, no, not there, so... Oh, right here, you got the pinouts right here. So you could do vertical. Kind of like a Raspberry Pi, there's jumpers on these boards that you can use. For us, we're not using anything on there, so I'm going to go ahead and leave them in the box. Keep it all stored together. So, the radio that's on this LoRa board is the ESP32-S3. And... Uh, here in the state side, I'm on 900 megahertz, so you can see that. But just to try to give you a little close up of everything on it. Now, they do recommend the flat 18650 batteries. And with all these, you definitely want to make sure you know which ones are positive, which ones are negative. It's clearly marked here positive, negative, positive, negative. So then just drop it in there. Yeah, it looks like it's already been firmware flashed with mesh tastic, so that worked out good. So it's really nice that Lily Go already sent that. It does want the region code, so I'll have to use the computer to flash that. But that's uh that's it in a nutshell. Now like with all of these devices, not all of because I've got one that just came in the mail yesterday, but most of these devices require some kind of case. So uh, I went on Etsy and found a case for this one. This one has, it's going to sit inside like so. And the idea with this was I wanted something I could, I could use clips to put on the Molly connectors on a plate. So that's why I went with this, this particular case. So it is a little bigger, but uh, we'll delve into it and see, see what it looks like. So I'm gonna take the battery out. Power it down first. There we go. And I sometimes struggle getting these little batteries out, so I'll cheat. You do that, don't 
don't poke down into the battery. So there's directions and files for these 3D printed cases. You can get wherever you need. Personally, I'm just, uh, I don't have a 3D printer. So I think I paid like 30 bucks for this case. And they generally don't come with directions. So you're just kind of, kind of looking and figuring it out. So if you struggle with anything like that, maybe, maybe find someone on Etsy that pre-assembled everything. Now I'll tell you that I ordered this from Lilygo directly from them and uh, we've ordered a couple radios directly from them and honestly the the shipping time you would think you know could could be several months coming from the they we used to always say a slow boat from china but actually it's uh, pretty quick i think i think this one was a couple weeks out maybe and uh Let's see how this case looks when the part. Oh, oh that's kinda of cool. There we go. So you just gotta get that make sure that nut stays in there really well, so Let's see if our buttons are working. I left the uh, sticker on that. No particular reason, just uh, I will say it looks like the screen's a little brighter on this one. This case feels really good. And again, you could pass through Velcro. It looks like he sent a couple things here. You know, obviously I have it upside down, but you kind of get the idea. And just as a reminder, the, the clips in the case do not come with these you can you can print your own you can get some files or you can do like i did just go to etsy and find some people selling the one for your radio but that's it this is the form factor i was looking for uh for my uh tactical comm setup so let me take you over there show you what i'm thinking so this could this could mount somewhere up here. Um, I may not mount it. You know, it could mount here, some you know, on, on the strap. I don't, or I may just move it back here to the back and replace this one that's in the back. Uh, the reason I like this is I can hook my upgraded antenna, and I'll probably end up using it there. So that's kind of in theory. Now I will say. I may throw some kind of tape over this screen. Well, you can disable the screen. I'll probably disable the screen in the programming because you don't want to advertise and have your screen display and all that. So I'll probably disable the screen on on this one just to keep it uh, private, you know. Anyways, let's jump into the computer and flash it and see what happens. All right, so we're going to... Plug this into the computer to flash it. And it does already have mesh testing on there, but I'm gonna just program it through the computer. It's got a USB C here on the bottom. Put it like that. Should hear that on your computer. Setting up the driver. It looks like Windows 10 has found it, no problem at all. Now that I have the radio drivers installed, which Windows did automatically, I'm going to head over to meshtastic.org and go ahead and 
go into the getting started. If you haven't uh, ever installed the drivers for any of these, maybe this is your first uh, node, you want to install serial drivers. And I'm going to jump ahead. Let me also show you here. Start is where I was at. It will help you identify here on the web page, like which which ES you know which board you have. Do you have the ESP32? Do you have the NRF52 or the RP2040? And you can see here it says the T-beam. Also on the side of the case it says T-beam screen ESP32 S3. So so you need to know which one you have. So let's go um, flash firmware. We already installed the other, so I'm going to go ESP32 device. We're going to go web installer. Plug in your device, which we did. And then I'm going to click the flasher and get a little Lenovo with their pop-ups. On this screen, I'm going to select my target device, which we're going to come down to T-Beam S3. I'm going to select my firmware. And then I always go with the one of the the latest, you know, stable. You could do some alpha testing if you want and see what they've come up with, but we'll just uh, stay with this one. We have flash, a lot of recommendations. Hit continue. As I'm reading this one's a little. If your device is ESP32 S3 based, you may need to turn it off and press and hold the boot user button while plugging in the cable. So. This is the power button, seems to be this one. And then I'm assuming this is the boot user button, so I'm going to unhook the cable. I'm going to hold that button down and plug it in. Now that did change. Now it's wanting to set up a different vi device. That may have made a difference. So let's go update now. See, so yeah, it even has a different COM port. So maybe that, that did it right there. So if you're like me, sometimes it pays to read the directions. A lot of times I skip over them. I was actually trying to do that the uh, the way I did all the other units, but then it's got it right there in clear blue. All right, so it's 100% completed. So I don't know if now if it, oh, it sounds like it's reboot so. Upside down, so let me go ahead and flip it. Let me hit the power button. Shut it down. So this is point three point one three connection serial so I just refresh refresh that page here it is back on com eight the black button again jump in now if this was the first install I'd go to config Laura and change that to US come back through and then I always like to turn that boosted receive up and turn it on. And the second thing I like to do is go ahead and come into the naming structure. And uh, we'll just Kind of come up with any name you'll notice every time it changes it will uh, reboot i 
And then, of course, you can come in here. Right now, I have just the default factory channel that comes with Meshtastic. Uh, for me, I like using my sm smartphone. I have a QR code stored on there. Uh, I could, I don't think this laptop has a, I could do the code, but for me, it's so easy to use those, uh, import my channels that way. So I just do it off of there. If you didn't have that, again, you come channel one, you can say enabled. Uh, I can only have one primary. So usually this one is set to primary. And as a reminder, only one primary is allowed, and that's where your GPS is sent over. So if you don't want your position sent over the, the default channel, you would change this and change this as primary and maybe make it a encrypted channel, give it a unique name. But as it is, this is the default channel. So if I don't touch it, that's kind of the channel that most people will be on when it first boots up. So if you're trying to be completely off-grid, you know, change this and put some, put a name on it, add encryption, etc. So, not much else to change until I get, uh, Still picking up some of the, the names and stations there. That's pretty much the, the quickness, you know, the rundown. If you're going to do some MQTT, you would come to module and it comes to MQTT, enable that. Uh, you'd, you'd add the channels that you want that enable that but basically you know like here you're going to be enabled leave your username password and right here this no that would all stay the same it's a little easier to do on the phone but for me flashing it to with the computer seems to be a little more stable flash the firmware with the computer, and then I like to use my app on the phone to, to update it. But if you're doing MQTT, you would enable it there, and then you come to the channels, and you wouldn't do it on the on the default channel because you'd just be flooded with them, but you would enable these two right here. Send messages from local mesh to MQTT, so from RF to internet, and from internet to RF. So that would uh, be there so that you would definitely flood your network with that so anyways that's uh that's it that's what the t-beam supreme looks like i really appreciate lily go and their support uh they've they've helped me with a couple radios um they sent me that t-deck and i've really been having fun with that i modified it put a little bigger battery in there so check that video out below if you want to watch it um and if you want some of the Lilligo products, uh, I'm going to put the link to it in my video. Uh, that is an affiliate link, so I get a small percentage if, if you order anything. But uh, that that is how I'm able to create these videos, and I appreciate that support. Uh, and again, if you order it from them, a lot of the... It's it's only taking about maybe a week and a half or so to get the, get the radios in, so they're... They're moving along pretty quick, and, and the back order is not quite an issue like it was before. I think now most of them is in stock. So be sure to check them out, and uh, we appreciate you guys. And, uh, again, get information, give information. Build your communication. You know, using little devices like this is a great way to build your communication network. But this was the unboxing, the assembly, flashing the firmware. Stay tuned because I'm going to show you how I'm going to hook this to my uh, my plate carrier and my portable communication pack. Just a, it, it's going to be a more of a tactical case is the reason I bought that one. So appreciate you guys. We'll talk to you next time.